I'm going to have a look today at uh, revisiting HDR time-lapse photography and I've come to a very beautiful but it's quite windy part of the west coast of Ireland in Cork. The idea here is we've got very dark shadow areas by the cliff faces, they're kind of black and grey anyway. And we've got a very bright sky as well, so HDR should be a good solution to getting a, a nice time-lapse on that. So I should be able to bring up the shadows and hopefully have good exposure in the brights as well. So let's have a look at shooting that now. So this is the clifftop I actually shot from. It was extremely windy. I actually shot this particular sequence in Magic Lantern Raw just because the contrast between the very bright sky and the dark cliffs was a really huge one. So the raw really helps to control that. And here I was, here's my position. I've got the 650D there with my Manfrotto tripod. And um, I'm low down because it was so windy anything high would have just blown it over the edge of the cliff and me probably as well. So I'm, I've got the camera set up here, I've got uh, my Sigma, that's my Sigma 24mm lens on it, it's a manual lens. These are the settings I used, I'll go over those later on in this uh, video, but you can see that the bracketing was three, I took three shots uh, every three seconds and there it is firing away, you can see how blown out the sky is there with this particular shot. So the sequence was a regular underexposed and an overexposed shot and then from then I edited this into the HDR time-lapse sequence which you can see here and which we'll see how to edit in another video. Okay for the second shot I took I used the my 5D Mark III, same tripod, I'm trying to hold it down there with a the bag uh, because it was so windy there it could have easily blown it over. I've also got, you might see them, my uh, loop on and that was really useful, I used that on the 650D as well to be able to set up uh, the focus. I'm trying to focus on the grass very close to the front there, as well as the distant objects, as well as the exposure. Really necessary on such a, a bright day up on an exposed uh, cliff top there. And I've got my Samyang 14 uh, millimeter lens on. And um, you can see there's a, it's got its own inbuilt lens hood. Unfortunately, it can't take, as far as I'm aware, it can't take uh, an ND filter. So um, I shot there without ND filter. This this shows them from another shot, the uh, intervalometer working. See, taking the three shots, the same as the 650D, uh, it's three stops difference between each shot, and you can see there the correct under and over. And then this is the final edited HDR time lapse sequence. In the rest of this video, we'll have a look at the more detailed settings for your lens, camera, and for magic lantern. So the first thing to have a look at is the lenses I'm going to use. So I'm going to use wide angle lenses. Um, this is a 24mm Sigma. I'll have a look at that now in a second. And I've also got a, a 14mm Samyang. I'm going to swap them around between the two cameras. And they're, they're, both, uh, they're both manual lenses. It means that they don't communicate with the cameras. And that's very useful for doing this type of photography, HDR time lapse, in that as they don't communicate, the apertures don't flicker at all. Because sometimes you get flicker in these HDR time lapses and the main cause of it is is the aperture which although you'll set the aperture in manual mode you'll see if it's an automatic lens which most lenses are these days it means that it'll still flicker a little bit the aperture just does even change it opens and shuts again um, I'm going to show you anyway how you can change your automatic lens to be a manual one so it does the same thing I'll show you that in a minute but just to have a quick look at these uh, manual lenses so you've got to set everything on here that the aperture you can see there I'm going to set today because it's a sunny day uh, aperture of uh, 16. It means we're probably not going to have flicker. If you had a automatic lens and you set it at the aperture, you would definitely have a lot of flicker unless you do what I'm, I'm going to tell you to do in a minute. So those two lenses, and the nice thing about this particular one, the 24mm Sigma, it's actually a Nikkor mount, but I've, put a, I've got an adapter on it. I'll just show you here. So this is the lens. I've got a lens hood on as well because it is a lot of flare because we're shooting into the uh, sky today and it's a sunny day. You might be able to see there a lens mount adapter which converts it from a, a Nikon mount to a Canon mount you just screw it on sc screws off again and that allows you to mount it on your Canon camera so I'm just going to put that back on another useful thing you might want to think about when you're doing uh, this type of work is getting ND filters I've talked about that in filming etc but they're actually quite useful in this type of work as well you've got very bright sunlight and it's, it's preferable if you can keep the shutter speed down as best you can so it doesn't go really high which you can do because it's, it's so bright it's quite handy to have that because you can you can basically drop the light coming in which means you can have a, a slower shutter speed 
I'm quickly going to show you how you can set your uh, standard uh, modern automatic lens to set the aperture so it's, uh, it basically acts as a manual lens. So I'm just going to put this, uh, this is the 18-135 Canon, one of the kit lenses, very good one. And I'm just going to put that on my 650D. So what you need to do, first of all, just, just mount it as normal. Set, you're going to want to set as well your, in all these lenses, your focus to manual on this one. On the, on the actual manual lenses, it, it's going to be manual focus anyway. Probably you can switch the stabilizer off. And what you've got to do next is you're going to basically set your aperture you want. So I want to set this aperture at f16. So I'm just going to do as I normally would do using uh, the AV button on this 650D. I'm going to set the aperture to 16. So that's set the aperture. Now what I'm going to do next is you might see there there's this uh, exposure, exposure simulation button or depth of field preview button here. And what this will do is if we hold that down, it'll actually set the aperture at f16 and hold it there. So I'm just going to press that. And I'm going to hold the catch that removes the lens, etc. push that in. I'm just going to turn the lens a little bit away from its locked position. And now what you'll see on the screen, the actual aperture setting changes to f00. There's no communication now between the lens and the camera, but the actual aperture is set on the lens now to f16 and it won't change, which is great. So now you've got your effectively made your automatic modern lens into a, a manual lens, which is great for this type of photography. The next one we're looking at the settings. So you need to set your dial to, it's going to be manual, everything's going to be manual mode. You're in photographic mode, obviously, but you're going to be manual mode for everything. And you want to make sure just in the menu, the Canon uh, menu, just turn off any sort of automatic things that affect exposure. So, uh, and also turn off things like auto power off, etc. You don't want it going off in the middle of your time lapse. I'm going to disable my LCD auto off as well, although it can save power. To be honest, I'd rather be able to see what's going on on the screen. Make sure things like touch shutter are disabled, etc. Because when you're working with this, especially you'll see in the Magic Lantern uh, options there, we're going to use that half shutter button to actually operate the uh, Magic Lantern. You want to uh, disable the noise reduction, high, high ISO speed noise reduction as well. You see auto lighting optimizer, make sure that's switched off as well. So those are the things you want to disable on the camera. Now the other thing you want to make sure you set, and just look in the settings, is you want to make sure you've got your white balance set as well, because that can vary. So I've set mine to cloudy, just because it is cloudy a little bit, but I like the warmer effect from a cloudy look. It doesn't make any difference if you're shooting raw, but um, if you are shooting JPEG, set your up and set to whatever um, white balance you want there. And you can see that I've got manual focus. Um, I set that on the lens here. That's pretty well it. I've also got, just on the settings generally, I've got an ISO of 100 set just because it is a very sunny day and I want the best quality possible. I want to kind of reduce the speed of the shutter as much as possible, so an ISO of 100 is the best, I think. And I've got f16, although you can't see it, set on the lens. And I'm going to start off with, anyway, looking through and start starting from 100th of a second because that's a sunny 16 rule. That would be the one for a sunny day. And then from there, I'll just double check the exposure to vary it up or down a little bit, depending. So the next big thing is just the picture quality you're going to want. And I've chosen uh, RAW, uh, the highest quality. We'll just go into that there quickly. And you can see the settings. Now actually it's quite handy here. If you go into uh, RAW, it does give the best quality. And it's useful when you go into the, the menu. It actually shows you how many shots you can get on your card. I've got a 32 gigabyte card in this particular uh, in this camera. And you can see it tells you the size of it. And it tells you actually how many photos you can get. So I can get... Uh, 1,276 photos on it and as you go through the different types it tells you how many you can get. Now with the RAW they're so large the files that actually uh, I'm going to want to be shooting around about 1,000, I want to get 10 seconds, I've worked it out, around about 1,000 uh, shots is what we're going to be taking. If you're going much beyond that this uh, 32 gig card will fill up, it'll be full so just, just note that and if you don't want to be doing RAW you can still get acceptable results from other formats, the large uh, one there for example, I mean even medium if you wanted, but large you get a lot more shots on there and because you're going to um, tone map the uh, three shots in this HDR sequence you're going to get very good results anyway.
So with the shoot menu, I'm going to use the uh, two features, the advanced bracket and the intervalometer, because we're going to do bracketed shots, three of them. So I'll click on set there, and you see it's set there, three, that's what it was set for before. I'm going to actually use three today. So by clicking the Q, you come into the submenu on the advanced bracket, and I'm going to leave it as the exposure type of bracket is what I want. Now the number of frames, I'm going to want three, so I want three shots, a normal exposure, an underexposure, and an overexposure. You can obviously um, choose more if you want. Next thing is you want to set what the exposure increment is. So at the moment it's three, that means that you'll, you'll have your normal correctly exposed shot, then the next shot will be three stops overexposed, and the next sh shot after that will be three stops underexposed. So you can change that. I mean, normally I'd leave it to two, but given the very extreme conditions today, um, I'm going to go for three above and below. And in sequence, you can see there it's set, I've set it there to zero, that's the correctly exposed shot, the first one, then it'll do an underexposed shot, the minus, and then it'll do a plus, an overexposed shot. And two seconds delay, you can leave that on auto and leave ISO shifting off. And then come out of that by clicking the menu button. Next thing you set is the intervalometer, go into that and press the Q button to go into the submenu. So I, I want it to set, I'm going to choose every three seconds. So the next thing is start trigger, and that can be quite aggravating unless you deal with that, and I'll show you why. So if I go into that now, I've set it to hold half shutter. By default, it's leave menu. Now if you do that, what that will mean is the minute you come out of it, it starts working, and that's not exactly what you don't want. I'm going to go back into the intervalometer, Q there, and I'm going to change that to not to half shutter because you can sometimes use that for other things. I'm going to hold the half shutter, it seems to me to be the safest bet. So you hold it down and then it will happen after you've done that, not just when you leave the menu, which is aggravating. Start after three seconds, that's okay. I'm going to leave it stop after, I'm going to leave that disabled and manual focus ramp off. So that set the advanced bracket and also the intervalometer now. And if I just half sh hold the shutter button and hold it and then let go. You can see it starts to count. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you found that useful.